Whoa, sweet, check this out. Come up here. What do you got? Look at these pockets of water. They're just filled with crabs. All right, let's get down. We got to film this. Oh, wow. All right, come on down. Here, hand the camera to me. Sweet. Wait till you guys see all these crabs. This is going to be awesome. Not exactly easy getting down here, is it? There you go. All right, you good? Watch rocks. They're slippery. What are these? These are pelagic red crabs, and they come in by the thousands. Look at that. Ow, ow, they're pinching me. The shores of California may look as if they're nothing more than rocks and crashing waves. However, if you arrive at low tide, carefully navigate the slippery rocks, and know exactly where to look, you will find a mysterious world of fascinating creatures. And sometimes, if you are incredibly lucky, you will find yourself in the right place at exactly the right time. Which is what totally happened for the Brave Wilderness crew and I when we came upon a massive wash-up of pelagic red crabs, a marine phenomenon that only happens every once in a great while. Right. Welcome back, everyone. Okay, so we're on location in Southern California right now, filming our new series, Beyond the Tide, shooting some B-roll shots, and I come up to the edge of this cliff and look in and see an entire pocket of water filled with pelagic red crabs. Here, let me grab a handful of these so you guys can see them. Come here, ow, 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 ah, getting pinched, getting pinched, but look at that. They look like little lobsters. Now you may be saying to yourself, coyote, is it a crab? Is it a lobster? It kind of looks like a shrimp. Technically, these are not true crabs. They're actually a subspecies of squat lobster. And let me just grab one and hold it up here for you. The reason they're called squat lobsters is they keep the abdomen tucked up underneath the thorax, just like that. Oh, got away from me. Come back here. Got the same one back. And you see that? See how its butt looks kind of squatted? That's where they get the name squat lobster from but they do use the tail to help them navigate through the environment. Now you look at this little creature and you think to yourself, well, it's got those big pinchers up front. It must be quite the predator. Actually, these crabs are vegetarians. And when you see them underwater, they have all these tiny little hairs on their legs and they actually use those hairs to help them filter food. If you look at the ones down here in the water, you can actually see them displaying this behavior. Look at this one right here on this green clump of seagrass. You can see all the little hairs extended out and he's just pushing pieces of food into his mouth. That is so cool. Wow, I am literally in a pool of crabs right now. Look at that, I can just reach my hands in there and get an entire handful of them. Now this is actually a really rare phenomenon that's happening right now. It's only every few years that you see a major wash up of these crabs on the shore. These crabs typically live far out at sea in the pelagic region, meaning that they're suspended in the middle of the ocean. Not on the shore, not on the basin, but just swimming freely out in the water. Now they do make great food for whales. Even something as large as a blue whale will go back and forth through swarms of these, gobbling them down. As soon as they end up on the shore like this though, we've got seabirds flying all over the place and it's an absolute buffet line. Let's see how many I can get in my hand at once. You know what this kind of reminds me of, Mark? When we were doing the newt episode and I was able to just walk into a pool of newts and pick up tons of them. Look at that. An entire handful of pelagic red crabs. And you may be wondering to yourself, are these crabs edible? I would say no. There wouldn't be much meat on an animal like this. Just the tiny little tail has a little bit of meat in it. They're mostly exoskeleton, eyeballs, and innards. For such a bizarre looking little ocean creature, they certainly are beautiful with that bright red coloration. Watch this, when I put them down into the water, it almost looks as if they glow. Wow, that is so cool. Now one question I often get is, Coyote, where do you and the Brave Wilderness team find inspiration for the shows you create? That's a great question, and the answer is books. When I was a kid, I absolutely loved to read. And if the subject matter was animals or dinosaurs, 
there's a good chance that I read it twice. Now as a big kid, I still like to read books, but I travel so much, sometimes it's difficult. So what I do is listen to books on audible.com. Now audible.com has over 250,000 different books to choose from, and just recently I listened to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Now this was one of my favorite books as a kid. I actually read it for the first time when I was eight years old. I find a lot of inspiration in books, and 20,000 Leagues definitely helped shape the design of Beyond the Tide. You have a situation like this, these crabs which belong far out in the ocean, yet they have washed up here on shore, a true mystery that is absolutely fascinating. And that's what I love about tide pools, you never know what you're going to find. So this is pretty cool. Recently audible.com found out that I was listening to their books. They wrote to me and said, Coyote, we should do a giveaway for the Coyote Pack. And I said, that would be absolutely perfect. So right now, because you're watching this video, if you go to audible.com slash coyote, you can get a free 30 day trial period and download your first book absolutely free. All right, I'm gonna let this little crab go and head back off into the tide pools to see what we can find. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next location. The tide pools of the world are filled with all kinds of mysterious creatures, many of which I've never even heard of and certainly have never captured for the cameras. The Brave Wilderness team and I are incredibly excited to bring you this new series, and we promise that just when you thought we found the most bizarre animal you've ever seen, something even stranger will show up in the next episode. If you're excited for Beyond the Tide to start, make sure to go back and watch the episode of Breaking Trail that inspired this new series, Exploring for Sea Creatures. And don't forget, download your free audiobook from audible.com slash coyote.